Hello everyone, welcome back. This is a new lecture in your course Mastering Docker. My name is Ahmed for Adionics and in this section we are discussing ways to install and use images from Docker. At the previous lecture we have stopped at searching the index for the repository that you need by specifying a keyword for the image that you want to pull and use. And we have seen in the previous lecture that the output contains not only the names but also other important information like the description, the stars, whether or not this package is official and whether or not it is automated and we are going to study now what automated means. To understand what automated means you have to understand how Docker images are built. You can use Docker command line tools to create and publish images to Docker Hub. You have two options for this. Either to create the image locally then push it to the repository and this makes the image untrusted and we're gonna see why in a moment. Or the other option is to create a Docker file. Docker files will be discussed later in this section and use Docker's continuous build system to build the image. This is preferred by most users than the first approach as the Docker file contains the commands and the activities that, that the image is going to make when a container is created. Images pushed this way are marked as trusted. So the first option available to you when you create images is to create the image locally. Just build it as we're gonna see later in this section. We're gonna see how to build an image from scratch. Just build the image and push it to the repository and that's it. When the user downloads the image, all what he has is just the image and he or she has the option either to run it, to run a container out of it or not. These are the only options that the user have. But when you create a Docker file and publish it at Docker, the Docker file contains all the commands and the files that this image will depend on. It contains the dependencies that this image will use. It contains any, any files that are going to be run, any commands, any scripts. Anything that this image is going to make is published or written in that file. So the user now has the option to read that Docker file before he attempts to run the image, before he attempts to create a container out of that image. He can he can read the Docker file and see exactly what changes the image is going to make to the system, and accordingly choose whether or not to run a container out of that image. So if this image is automated, this means that the Docker file is available and that you can use that docker file you can read the docker file before you attempt to run a container out of that image and see exactly what this image will do to the system before you attempt to use it so of course that is trusted and that is more favorable choice for most of the users of course if you want to download or run an image you may, have, you may want to know exactly what will this image do before using it but before you can push images to docker hub you'll have to create an account on docker the basic account type of account is free, after which you will have to issue docker login command to authenticate yourself. Then you can push images to any repository that you own. And after that you can log out after you are done using docker logout. So you can just head to https colon double slash cloud dot docker dot com. Okay, and here you're going to choose your docker ID. This is going to be your username and it's, it's also going to be your docker ID. This is where your images will be identified. Say for example John Doe slash the image name, enter here your email and the password. You will soon get an email asking you to verify your email account. And after that you will have a fully functional Docker account where you can use to test your work. And as you can see here, if you have a look at pricing, signing up is free. But if you had to but if you want to have private repos where only you or specific users have access to, you'll have to pay a monthly fee, depending of course on your usage. But you can create a free account and use it to run public repositories. And of course you can use that account to learn more about Docker. And although Docker Hub is very popular and would contain most of what you need to test and learn Docker, it is not the only source of images. You can use other registries provided by other companies. You can also host your own repository, build your own image using a Docker file, or manually download and run an image from a file. If you want to download an image from a registry other than Docker's default one, just specify the pull path instead of just the image name. Let's see example. Let's say that I want to download an image of WordPress, but I want to use another repository other than Docker Hub. So I have searched and I have found that Quay.io provides an image for WordPress. So I can use Docker pull Quay.io slash Nitrous, which is the name of the user who owns this image, slash WordPress, just like that. And as you can see here, the only difference I have made between pulling an image from right from Docker and using another repository is that I have specified the full name here instead of just tell, telling the system Docker pull and then 
specifying WordPress as the image name, I have entered the full URL of the image, quay.io slash nitrous slash WordPress. And that way it's going to be downloaded. Okay, let's leave it to continue here in the background while we return to our lecture. And Docker knows how to communicate with the registry and download the image, but sometimes registries require that you authenticate yourself before downloading any images. If that's the case, you will have to consult the appropriate image documentation. Now, let's say another option of working with an image. We can obtain an image from a file. Pulling images from repositories may be the easiest option, but it's not always available. Let's say you have a server with no internet connection or behind a firewall that blocks access to repositories or in a situation where you, don't have, where you don't have access to an online repository, but you do have access to an image file. Using Docker, you can load an image from this file easily. So let's say a friend of yours has given you an image on a flash disk or sent it to you via email or you just downloaded it from some website and for some reason or another you do not have access to the public repository of Docker or other vendors. You just happen to have that image locally on your machine and you want to install it. Docker gives you this ability. You can use docker load command to do that. So in our example here, okay, this is gonna take a long time. Let's cancel it. And let's do docker rmi busy box. This command is going to delete the busy box image and because it is being already used by a container, I'll have to start that container first. So let's stop this container. Now let's delete the image. Okay, we have another container. Stop it. Let's delete it. Okay, so now I have deleted the BusyBox image. I have stopped all the containers and I have deleted the image successfully from my system. And I do have a BusyBox image locally on my system called BusyBox.tor. And in a few moments, I'm going to show you how I grab this image file. So using docker load minus i followed by the image name or the image file name. I can load that image. Now if I run docker images, I have busybox running. Okay, now how did I get this image? I simply use docker, let's remove it first, docker rmi busybox. Okay, let's force removing it. Okay, now it has been removed. And let's also delete the file busybox.tar and let's start from scratch. What I did is that I used docker pull and pull the normal busybox image from the repository. So it's docker pull busybox. Let's wait for a few moments till it downloads the image. Okay, it has downloaded it. We have a look at docker images. Okay, it is there. Now I can use, let's clear the screen. I can use docker save minus o, minus o lets me specify the file at which I want to save the image. So let's say my docker image for a different name than the previous one. Okay and I specify that I want this to be grabbed from the busybox image and that's it. If I run ls-ltr I'll see that my docker image.tar is available at my system and I can use that. Let's remove busybox okay and let's again run docker load minus i my docker image okay and if you run docker images you will see that my busybox is available. So you can have this file my docker image to tor and you can distribute it anywhere any server that is running docker any machine that is running docker can have this image and it can use it to load the image contained inside it and this is just a normal tar file if you want to you can have a listing of the files inside it let's have a look as you can see here it contains some tar files and some json files containing the configuration needed the version some other import, some other metadata that the image uses, and th this is just the contents of the image. If you are, if you are, inter if you are interested, or if you're curious to have a look at them, these are just the contents of the image. This is just a very normal tar file. It is the format that Docker uses to save images locally on the system. And in the coming lecture, we are gonna see how to build our own images from scratch. So see you next.